Hello, this is Drew out here on location for another reading of Charles Kettering's book, Short Stories of Science and Invention. Today's program is Harnessing the Iron Horse. Appropriate. America emerges from this war as the strongest military nation in the world. This may seem strange to many of us because we are not a military-minded people. A second look into this seeming contradiction shows our military strength came in part from our great pre-war industries. One of the oldest of these is the railroad. It's played a major role in achieving the great victory today. But it also has been an important factor in building America for more than 100 years. The year 1830 is an important one to all Americans because it was that year the locomotive Tom Thumb ran a race with a horse-drawn car at Baltimore. It was in that year that the first locomotive, the best friend of Charleston, was placed in regular service on any American railroad. And the next year, the DeWitt Clinton made its first run from Albany to Schenectady. To appreciate what this meant in those days, we should remember our country was at that time largely a rich, unexplored wilderness and needed transportation for its development. There were waterways and a few turnpikes, but the country needed more than that. It must have an all-year-round transportation system. From this great need came the railroad. Horses were used for power before the locomotive. First tracks were wooden rails, then wooden rails topped with iron straps, and then the iron T-rail. In 1870, men said railroad development had reached the end because the iron rails could not stand the increased loads. But Henry Bessemer in England invented a process to produce cheap steel just a few years before, so the path was again opened. But another handicap existed. Railroad tracks were of different gauges, which prevented the interchange of freight and passenger equipment. In 1871, the railroads began to standardize on a distance of four feet, eight and a half inches between the rails, and by 1887, nearly all the roads were changed over. But rails and locomotives were not the only drawbacks to this new form of transportation. There was the problem of lighting the track. The first American trains could travel only in the daytime. Then a large candle lantern was placed on the locomotive, and in 1840, a reflector was added. After the discovery of petroleum, kerosene lamps were used, then gas, and now electricity. When trains began to travel at night, the sleeping problem arose. The early sleeping facilities were crude until 1858 when George Pullman began his experiments and came out in 1864 with the Pioneer A, the first Pullman. All the Pioneer Railroad equipment was crude and accidents were quite frequent. One cause of these accidents were Lincoln pin couplings which had to be guided into place by trainmen standing between the cars. In the 1890s, this hazarded hazard was eliminated by the invention of the automatic coupler. As train speeds and weights increased, the matter of adequate brakes also rose. Many devices were tried, but the handbrake was standard until 1868 when George Westinghouse invented the air brake. These are only a few highlights of the background of our modern railroads. It was these things that helped our forefathers push back the wilderness and create the richest nation in the world. It was these railroad pioneers who made possible that event on May 10th, 1869, when our East Coast and West Coast were linked together with the Golden Spike Ceremony that connected the Union Pacific and Central Pacific Railroads. Today, there are over 400,000 miles of railway track in the United States, over which move some 45,000 locomotives. To operate and maintain our railroads requires nearly a million and a half people, one of our greatest industries. During this war, with less equipment and fewer employees than in the First World War, it is 
handled 98% more traffic, a remarkable record of efficiency. What the train of tomorrow will look like, how it will perform will depend, like so many other things, on what you, the public, would like. Great new things are ahead in both freight and passenger service. You will see more streamlined trains with Vista domes and diesel engines as the different lines can meet, compete for your traffic. While our railroads have a remarkable record of serving the nation for over a hundred years, they also have a keen pioneering outlook for the world of tomorrow. We owe this great transportation system a vote of sincerest appreciation. Okay, that was Harnessing the Iron Horse by Charles Kettering back during World War II during radio broadcast of the symphony. And I'm standing in front of like the Union Pacific out here in River, Riverside, California. Okay, thanks, keep learning and bye-bye.